everyone. We're live here at CCKK. My name is uh, Mr. Perez. That's who everyone usually knows me as. But uh, we're going to be demonstrating today how Kempo techniques go from a striking method to a grappling method. Because we're trying to show how the arts can improve together. Um, as you guys all know, we do American Kempo Karate. Okay? And we have what we call... Um, an American system Mr. Edmund K. Parker started as a blend between Chinese Kempo and Japanese system, heart, system, heart style. But we also start to improvise these strikes in our system. And I want to show you how it can lead into becoming a judo toss to a grappling situation. We do here, unfortunately, a lot of times people are just standing there and just taking hits and that's not true. So I want to explain now that we have a physical, we have bodies here, we can demonstrate this and talk to you about how we can make our stuff work. And hello to everyone coming in on the live feed. All right, good to see you. I got my buddy here, Jonathan. Okay, he's going to be helping us out and explaining how we can improvise judo throws into our system. Just like Ed Parker, if you guys don't know, Ed Parker was a judo black belt. Okay, glad for you guys to be joining in. So um, let's talk about striking was against a left hook. Okay, so we're going to imagine someone here trying to throw a left hook, and then, you know, it's going to be a follow-up straight jab. It's going to be a hook and a cross, or it's going to be a hook and an uppercut. But if it's a hook, either way, we got to control the width of our attacker. We've got to control the other hand. So I'm going to have uh, Jonathan here. So when he throws that, so my hands are up and we're engaged, he throws that, I'm going to check. Okay, now even if I wasn't, if I misgaged it, he faked me and I went here, my hand, you notice, didn't go way out here and commit. I stayed in the line. Boom. I take my hammer and jam this across the bridge of the nose before that secondary punch comes in. Because if we go slow motion, he shoots this, that's coming in. We know this is going to come in. But if I can control that depth, by, we'll go slow. If he goes here and he throws this, well, this hopefully can rake and hit a vital right there. I'm being careful, but... This hand is going to go strike, then down with an elbow, okay? So obviously he's not going to just stand there. We can keep hitting constantly. If we were, if we were like fighting and, and striking here, then I come in for a grab. Well, at this point, if we're struggling, struggling with each other, one of us can try to throw or strike with my knee or headbutt. We have that in Kempo. Those exist in Kempo. So we can go from striking and using this hammering motion. What is a hammering in, in karate? It's a solid block representing a mace. You take this, guys, an outward extend. If you, t if you practice from hands up, shoot out, and then reverse this in on a linear motion, you're going to cross-check the opponent's secondary punch. Okay? So, again, well, I'm not going to hit him in the head. But we're going kind of fast. Boom. This is in. This, this comes in. My hand is still here. I can check over. Okay. Notice how we have that one, two. Let's go from the opposite side so you can see it. So from here, we have this boom right here. So this is tracking right up that temple and bridge of the nose. And then I can drop that elbow or I can roll it into a back knuckle. My left hand stays here. Now, in Kempo, there's no rolls. If my hands can dig and, and put my fingers into those eyes, I'm going to do that and rip, ripping, okay? We don't just go punch, punch, circle, circle. You'll see that in MMA a lot. This is illegal in MMA. Eye gouging is illegal. Elbow hammers to the back of the head. That's illegal. You can't hit to the skull in MMA. But in Kempo, we have the boxing. We have the straight jabs, the crosses, the uppercuts, the hooks, the liver shots, we have that in our system. And a lot of times we don't get the credibility because people just mimic what they see on TV. So I'm going to show you how Jonathan's going to explain how you can add a judo toss into our system. Okay, so we'll, we'll go from this angle like you were, we were talking about. So I'm going to throw the hook at him. First off, I want to ex explain footwork really fast because in every system you have to know footwork to be done. Then that's the reason why you say my martial arts sucks or I suck. So for example, is I'm using this noodle right here. I put it on the ground horizontal, and as a judo fighter, we go right here and we go towards our back. 
to toss the point because we're using our hips. And if anyone's there, please uh, know that you have to go right here and then toss. That's a quick of demonstration, Mr. Perez. Yep. So as he throws the hook, right, I'm in here grabbing the sleeve or grabbing the arm, going to the full 180, grabbing the wrist, into the judo throw. One more time, or a couple more times to see how the scenario is playing out. This is what they did in all of this. Japan. Yes! See? And then, because originally Jiu Jitsu was Judo, and I could go into an arm bar, it's different scenarios. But this was in the Edo period of the modern day samurai. Oh, I go in, I have to go turn my back to the corner in order to do the judo throw. Then we're going to put in a Kempo scenario. So as he's coming in, I'm right here. I could kick to the head. I could go to the knee. I could uh, go to the face with my knee, pull the arm. I could. Uh, we have different scenarios, you know, and we could do Ed Parker. There's a technique in Ed Parker where if he's on his back, we can get him into his back and use the ball of our feet, like Bruce Lee and Enter the Dragon, except he did it on the neck. We could do that too. We could go on the kidneys. That's an important technique. We could go on the head, twist, break the neck, up, this is And then we're gonna go into a leg lock. So as it comes in, Yes. Right? I roll over and then I'll come over here, Mr. Press, with the leg right here. There you go. So, he's right there checking the camera. You go right here, you go into a leg lock and break the ankle, twist it. Go right here, break your foot. Come up, Mr. Press. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate it in technique wise. So he throws the hook right here, drop the sleeve. I can go around the wrist. And as I go into here, 180, I'm sitting down, squatting. I grab his belt. I can grab his waist. I have his wrist. The important thing is control. I lift him and I throw on. All right. So that's a. Uh few ideas guys of how you can use your Kempo and Judo and put it all together. Okay, as you can see they all come together. I don't know if anybody has any uh, questions or comments, you guys feel free to comment. Uh, like I said, this is how we start to practice and expand just from striking. We don't just utilize our Kempo techniques and, and standing statue, but how you train and how you counter. Right, so one thing we could do is that from the hook here, if he was gonna throw this, we know that this is coming in. Now, if I open up here, I know I'm gonna let this guy drop and shoot this, so I wanna be on the outside now. So if I'm on the outside, it's a technique called dance of deaths. Okay, so, which has another throw. So if I'm here, one, two, boom, take his leg and drop him, and now I have him in this position on the ground. Here, slide back a little bit. So when he's here, I can take this ankle, lock that Achilles tendon, and break and just fall on my back and snap. Okay? And at the same time, while I'm going here, I hit the groin, drop that knee to the groin, take that knee into the inside, and now I have a knee lock. So, Kempo is Jiu Jitsu. Thank you. It's, uh, it's just how you use it and where you can find it. It's in the system, guys. So, that's uh, something I wanted to share with you today. Appreciate you guys coming in, logging in, watching. If there's any questions, let me know. If you guys have any questions right now, right now is the time to ask. Yes, I do know Mr. Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins is a great black belt. One of, I, know, I have a best friend that trains with Mr. Hawkins. One of the few that trained with Ed Parker privately in the household. So, uh, Mr. Hawkins, great, great, great instructor, great black belt. Um, but yeah, right now we're just talking about how strikes and Kempo work and how we can check limbs and check opposite hands, right? How we can be on the outside of a punch, inside of a punch, 
we were working slips. A lot of you guys, the guys go like, well, you can learn boxing. We're working slips. Like how you can slip, slip, punch, lean back, dip. Those are all Kempo motion. We're just taking that circle and we're either making it linear, forward and back, going through depth, slipping, side to side, width, dipping, which is height, and learning how to deal with punches coming at you like this. Right? Because they're going to keep flying at you and then they're going to latch onto you. Okay? That's just what Kempo is about is how we can get out of those scenarios. So I wanted to explain that, but I appreciate everyone coming in today and watching. So thank you guys for participating in our live uh, video here. And I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to share, Jonathan. Uh, keep in mind, uh, Ed Parker was a judo black belt, and then he started into Kempo with uh, William and Frank Chow, you know? Uh, like Mr. Perez said, there is a lot of joint locks and uh, manipulations in uh, old school karate and Kempo. It's just that, uh, like, if, if you, as our viewers, if you know watering down a technique, that's the problem that went into sport karate. There are techniques. Karate is useful. I've used it against a kickboxer. And there was some transitioning that the kickboxer didn't know, you know? And then there's just different techniques in every martial arts system. You know, every style is good. You know, I love it all. Kickboxing, uh, Kenpo, uh, Jiu-Jitsu, you know, like uh, different techniques. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you'll see this in Kenpo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do exactly what people in Kenpo always get us to do here, okay? Or you'll say like, like what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna have Jonathan stand still and I'm gonna just do a couple techniques. He's not gonna react. Okay, so like go to a horse. So you're gonna see this a lot, guys. Now, you guys see it all the time in our videos. So I'm just gonna throw a strike. So you'll, you'll just kind of be like in just chamber position, like control horse. And then I'm just gonna throw a strike. So you'll see this. You'll see like a hand, a hand sword. You'll see a couple things going from one, two, three. You have this. Okay, okay let's come back just a little bit. You'll see the strike. So. Boom, coming over, strike up, down, over, hitting, growing, elbows down, uppercuts. You have all these different strikes, and then you have the low, the strikes come in, where I can shoot here high to the eyeball, kick out that knee, shoot down that solar, it's coming up. You have all these different strikes, and you see how quick they are, but they're dynamic. I'm controlling the amount of depth hitting them. No one's ever going to stand like that. Yes, we understand, and I'm going to keep making videos like this to make it clear. Um, but if there's any questions, I'm, I'm ready to, at this point, call it a night for live footage. Is there anyone out there that has questions right now that wants to ask? Please answer questions. We, we love feedback. You know, if you say uh, <laughs> the technique's awful, give us your reason why. We'll yeah. answer it. Yeah. Okay. Or if it would work against a real bear hug situation. We did crushing hammer on the videos before, so I heard that. All right. Um, okay. So awesome, guys. We appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed the live footage. We did cover how you can put judo in with Kempo and where it's still there. It all fits. Um, one last thing I guess I can say is sleeper hold. In Kempo, we have the sleeper. So I'll kind of leave it at this. In Kempo, we strike, but we latch. So we we're practicing from, um, is there a ready? Uh, no, it's a left punch, right combo. So he goes left here, and I, I block high. And then straight. So we're going to think of a, ja a straight and a cross. So it goes straight here. And he's straight. A jab. Or is that? A jab. So he jabs, crosses, right? So I have this idea. So let's come back just a little bit. So we have again, we have this one, two, okay? Now from here, his, all his body weight's coming forward. Okay, let's back up. I want to explain that. See how he was lunging? Well, at this point, I can pull him, and now I'm taking advantage of his depth. I got to control his depth because he's coming one, and this is lunging in and not retracting back. In this case, I'm going to take advantage of pulling the opponent like a rope. Okay? So, while we were here, we went one, two, pull, and now I have my hand. Let's go on this. I have this hand here ready. So, basically using this sleeper hold and putting the putting the hold on. It's not a choke, but more of cutting the supplies on the carotid arteries. He, uh, we had a question about coming behind. We will get to that. Let us uh, finish this 
this topic. Today. How about a person coming up from behind you? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna get to that. So it depends on what you mean by like a behind, like a grab. Are he's grabbing me here? He's bear hugging me, punching me. Okay. Well, obviously, if I'm in this scenario, we're gonna be struggling for base. I want to trap both his hands. First of all, if I don't trap both his hands and one hand is free, he's going to pound me with the other hand. So if it's a latch, I'm going to latch on here and control his hands. Now I can figure where I'm going to go, right? See how he's struggling, okay? And see if I keep my hips below his hips, we're going to either A, go to the ground, or B, we're going to go into a striking method, okay? So let's go into that behind the grab. That's a good topic. He grabs anyway. Starts going for it. Starts trying to take. So I'm hitting my face low. Okay. I got to keep these hands in control. One of the key things I can do is I can kick. I can try to stomp. I can try to hit the groin. Because my hands are free, I can take a finger and break. So let's get closer. So if you have this here, see, I want to get it. See if you guys can see it. If I can get this and one of these fingers and snap it, I'm going to snap a finger. But I don't want both of them locked. Look at my elbow, how it's pinned to my body. He can't pull. He's trying. But my elbow's up. It's game over. My elbow's up. Look, he's going to slip right out. Okay? So pinning in Kempo is key by this elbow locking and real tight. It's like a headlock. You don't hold someone like this. You grind that headlock really tight. Okay? So that was a great question. Glad that you guys were giving me some feedback here. Appreciate it. So thank you again. I think it's, I got to get ready to head out, guys. So hopefully we'll try this again. We're going to try doing a live street video where you can see Kempo in the actual street. I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. Street clothes, no gi, Kempo and regular clothes, okay? <laughs> All right, love the comedy. All right, it's going to be a vampire style, though. That's how I'll do it. Okay. Right in the nose. <laughs> All right, guys, you take care. Thank you for the love, support, love the channel. Make sure you guys like and, and follow the channel, please, and help us continue to make videos. And give us feedback so you guys know what we want, what you want to go over. There might be, I love the question, what do you do from the back? Now, um, you know, ask questions. That's how we get better with ourselves. Uh, what if they do this? What if, there's always what ifs. There's always what ifs, guys. Okay? So thank you. Uh, appreciate it. You guys take care. Uh, from CCKK, I'm Mr. Perez. We have Mr. Jonathan here, and thank you. Let's see how we end.